Hello everybody, welcome back to another video here at Rule 1 Model Railways. Sorry for again for lack of updates, but we have been very busy recently with Western Interchange. Um, we've basically gone from bare baseboards to a fully functioning layout now. I'm sorry that I haven't uploaded, but I've been kind of carried away from getting all the progress done on it. You can probably hear it in the background running. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to give you an update on the layout. Stay tuned for more. Here is um, the depot and fiddle yard end of Western Interchange. As you can see, um, we've added a baseboard there so that um, the Fala car system can run around. Not sure whether to cover that or not, I'll leave it exposed. Um, it's been kind of handy recently to put the tools on, as you can see, and the bits and bobs there. Um, there comes the car, or the van in this case. Off it goes. And as you can see, that leads us neatly on to our refueling area. So I have a second one of these uh, buildings here, the pump stations, to go here. It's on the way in the post. Um, the reason being, I've got lots of two car trains and would have two pumps, one for each car. We have the pump set. We have a Cura scale um, buffers. I have a maintenance area there. And just in time, here comes the 150 into the yard on the automation. As you can see, it stops exactly right now. And that also lets us see the signals, the signals are actually working on this, you can see them there so they're obviously one on the left is for the left line, one on the right is for the right hand line but they're working just fine now we have our porter cabin block so the drivers can take their brakes and sign on and sign off we have our twin track main line, no, twin track main line, sorry, our twin track bridges. So the backstory to this layout is fictional, but what we're saying is it used to be a uh, twin track junction for two main lines that were cut in the beaching axe and rationalised to be just a branch off of one of the lines, and the other line was then recommissioned to install the um, refuelling area. Moving around, we can see the Falakar system is all installed, the building is still there as it was. And I've placed the platform edging down, some of it's glued, so you can see a nice long straight bit there. Um, and I'll work on the rest of that today. We've got one of the buffers there from a Cura scale, this one has the light on it. But what I'm finding it is actually activates my um, block detection so it never goes off. So I'm going to have to wire that in separately, not using the track. Now, again, with this point here, actually, before I explain that, let's have a look at the signal going. While well, that train's going out, there you go, look, it's white. Once it clears the point, it should change. Oh, there you go. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, we were talking about this point here. I tried for ages to get the points to work using the 6mm setting, which is supposed to be for double O on these point motors. Um, to the point I ac actually accidentally broke the spring in this one, so there's no spring in it at all. But because of the type of point motor that it is, it actually holds it in place quite well, so it's not the end of the world. In fact, it's probably my best point now. It looks the most realistic when it um, changes over. 
as opposed to the ones with strings, they have a bit of a uneven sort of motion, so. There it goes. And off goes the first Great Western 150. These gaps between the track and the points where there's no sleepers, I'm going to be infilling those. I've done one already, just there. As you can see, uh, which one was it? It was that one that I put in. I'm going to do all of the others with that, like that sort of method as well. Here goes our pacer into our bay in the diesel depot into the maintenance area. And it fits just nicely. <coughs> the 158 and the 150 don't fit in there but um, I have on order a class 37 so that will also go in there that will fit and there's our 158 see it's a bit longer that's uh, only to be used on the longer line there now let's have a look around the back see the operating area is all complete it's all installed nicely I've left the long wire there in case I need to move the laptop to show somebody something the uh, area for the mouse is great loads of space there it's brilliant I've got our programming track so that can be done out of sight of the public all of our points and the track is all in rather wonderfully this point I accidentally bought so I made the most of it and had three tracks in the fiddle yard that's why the alignment is a little bit off but nobody can see it so it doesn't really matter that much all of the trains will go over it we can see here I have the um, paper there over where the file car system goes in fact here it comes now just zooms off down there this paper is well it's actually cardboard it's only there to secure the um, uh, magnetic wire in over the top of this I should be putting in some scale scenes uh, print at home road system stuff so look forward to that and then it comes out the other end so this is the view I get from operating <coughs> I can see all down there I can't actually see down here so for this area, I have to rely on the uh, software to tell me where stuff is, but it's actually really reliable. But as I said, with the MP5 point motors, I have had some problems, which have been resolved by using the N-gauge settings rather than the 001s, and I believe that's because I've got a code 75 track rather than code 100. I think it's got a finer movement to it, so sometimes this point doesn't actually throw properly I'm going to take this motor off now and change the settings inside that one and that should be it, we should have 100% running if you've enjoyed the video thanks for watching, do hit the subscribe button the like button and I'll see you in the next one take care